everybody, put your hands together and welcome to the stage our next storyteller, Terry Cole. would feed us dinner and give us a bath together and put us both to bed, and that was the end of that. And one day, one hot summer day, when I was about five years old, I was playing with the kids next door, and I found out that in other people's houses, older kids had later bedtimes. <laughs> and this, I was like, what even? So I go home to my mother with my newfound information, and I advocate for policy change. <laughs> And I am denied. And this is it. I've had it. This big sister thing is not what it's cracked up to be. Every time we both do something together that we're not supposed to do, I get in more trouble. Everybody's always paying attention to her. She's little. She's cute. She's got that eye patch thing going on. And, and, and I'm done. And we have to go to bed at the same time. I've had it. So I go to my room. And from my closet, I take my white vinyl Partridge Family sleepover uh, suitcase, and I put it on the bed, and I start to pack. <laughs> now, I'm an early reader, so into the suitcase goes Nancy Drew and Amelia Bedelia and some Barbies, and by the time I'm done, there is no room left for clothes. <laughs> but I'm leaving forever, and I'm running away, so I know I'm going to need a wardrobe. And I put on a pair of pants, two pair of underwear first, because you got to have a change, right? A pair of pants, a pair of shorts, a t-shirt, a hoodie, a raincoat, and over it all, a crocheted poncho with fringes. <laughs> and I go down the stairs where my mother is in the kitchen, and she kind of looks up, and she asks if I'm running away, and I tell her yes. And <laughs> She is not nearly as upset by this as I feel she should be. And she looks at me and she goes, are you going to Grandma Sylvia's? Which is the only other place I know how to be because it's not even a mile away, but I can't believe she can figure this out. She's like some kind of witch. <laughs> and, and I don't answer her and I leave. And I go out the front door and down the driveway. Now remember, it's the 70s and they have not yet invented suitcases with wheels and mine is full of books. <laughs> So with every step, I'm dragging my suitcase. And I go down the driveway, left on Redwood, left on Clearfield, left on Red Oak. And I, with every step, I am sweating and dragging and sweating and dragging. And I am so intent on my mission that I don't realize my mother is like 20 yards behind in, in her Plymouth fury following and waving concerned citizens on their way. And finally, it's the left on Old Lime, and I get to number 73, Grandma's apartment building. And I go up the stairs to the building. And before I even knock, the door opens. And my grandma tells me she's very happy to see me, but I'm certainly not living there forever. <laughs> and I realize my mother has called ahead, and I have been betrayed. <laughs> so I'm in the living room. My grandma, she's like, do you want a drink as long as you're here? So she goes to get me some juice. And I'm in the living room, and I'm taking off my layers. And my mother comes sweeping in. And she sits down in my grandfather's wingback chair, and she pats her lap. She goes, come here. And I don't want to go, because I am righteously pissed. <laughs> but I'm hot, and I'm five, and I, get, <laughs> and I get on my mother's lap. And she pushes my hair back behind my ear, and she says, sweetheart, what is it? Why have you left? Why have you run away? And it all comes tumbling out. It's not fair, and all the time, and Lisa, I get into trouble, and she doesn't, and we should not have the same bedtime. <laughs> and my mother, and my mother, who has always known me better than I've known myself, takes my hot, red little face in her hands, and she says to me, sweetheart, 
I don't want you to be so miserable. She says, you came first. If it's that hard for you living with Lisa in the house, tomorrow morning I will call the orphanage and we will send her away. <laughs> okay. And I realize, I, I know what orphans are, I read, I know what the orphanage is, and I start to cry and I beg her, beg her, don't send my sister away, no, no, no. And my mother reluctantly agrees that we'll all go home and we'll give it another try. <laughs> and that night, that night, my mother feeds us scrambled eggs and SpaghettiOs for dinner and she gives us a bath and she puts us to bed at the same time as she will for many years to come. And in those years to come, Lisa and I will grow to be two halves of the same whole. We will be there through adventures and concerts and boyfriends and divorces and death and everything. But every once in a while, we'll have a fight. And if that happens to this day, and I turn over my shoulder and I say, Mom, Lisa's being mean to me. My mother always answers in the same way, and she says, you had your chance. 